All right, so it has been eight long months for parents. And yes, we are counting because we're dealing with working from home, remote learning and maintaining a household. It's madness. And if you are now running on fumes, you're not alone, my friends, but there is help here with ways to avoid parent burnout is author of the book Mama, You Are Enough. Dr. Claire Nikogosian, a licensed clinical psychologist. Doctor, thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, I've got my list and it's long, but what are some of the top complaints that you've been hearing from parents? Right. Well, in my private practice and as well as just as a mom myself of four daughters, you know, we are exhausted mm -hmm. physically, emotionally, and we're feeling like we're running on fumes, so many of us. So I think that's the collective stress right now is that parents are feeling like they have nothing left to give, but there's a lot more giving to do and a lot of responsibilities that they have to keep on doing. So how do we get through it? Because I, yesterday I was at the sink, I was cleaning up and then there all these things were going on and I just had to take a deep breath because I just thought I was going to explode. There was just so much and the pressures of all of this for months and months on end. So is that what you need to do? Take a deep breath? I mean, I, I think I need a little bit more than that though. <laughs> Well, breathing is good, so that's a good start. Um, you know, when people are anxious, we hold our breath. And so actually taking a deep breath and practicing regulating breathing throughout the day is one way to do reduce stress. What we're looking for as parents right now is we need sustainable coping strategies and skills yes. to get through this intense time. And so one of the things that I'm a huge advocate for is parents taking care of their mental health and well-being. And that is something that I wrote about in Mama, You Are Enough, all about how to manage your emotions and stress in, in parenthood and motherhood. So what are the top tips for that then? Well, the top tips is really you want to really check in with yourself and know what you're feeling and know what is going on with you. Because when we ignore our feelings and emotions, they come out in different ways. They often come out in reactive ways where we're getting really frustrated, very stressed, we're yelling at our kids, we're feeling so overwhelmed and resentful because we may not have enough support. So really you want to do a daily check-in first and see how you're feeling mm -hmm. and also bring down these high perfectionistic standards that you are going to be effective in all areas of your life. We're in survival mode right now. Right. We're in a pandemic. We're getting close to a second wave as everyone's kind of feeling across the nation. Mm -hmm. This is not the time to panic. This is the time to create a solid foundation of taking care of your physical health and your emotional that health. That is so true, but and it can be overwhelming. With the basics, you know? Yeah, but you know, it like I said, it can be overwhelming considering that the second wave is almost upon us and it's like, oh, I, I'm just barely getting through right now. So I know you have a five uh, step plan as well. And tip number one is develop, explain that. Yes, yeah, so the tip number one is really you want to develop really active, healthy coping skills. Active coping skills do two things. One, they're going to reduce your stress, and two, they're going to actually you know, build your resilience. So that includes making sure you get enough sleep, you get enough you know, movement in your body during the day, mm -hmm. you stay hydrated, you reduce your alcohol use. Those are all the foundational parts of active Reduce alcohol right use, some, that's how some are just getting by. <laughs> exactly, well that's not sustainable. So that's mm -hmm. what my biggest concern is as a psychologist is I'm seeing a lot of alcohol abuse and really? dependence mm. because people don't have other coping skills to manage their emotions. So they're really numbing out and escaping. Gotcha. So that's the one big thing I want to I want to stress is you've got to take care of your physical health, which then leads into taking care of your emotional All right. health. So to step and, two is plan, right? Yes, plan. So here's the perspective that I've been saying a lot in the therapy room is we've gotten through nine months. You've gotten through nine months of this pandemic. And we know more now than we did back in the spring. So remember that, highlight your strengths. Remember that you've gotten through this and this is time to pause for a minute and do a little inventory. You know, what do I need to do practically that I wasn't prepared for last time? What do I need to do to prepare for my kids' boredom? Or if school goes all distant learning back, you know, for several months, how can I prepare everyone, including myself or family, to, to handle all that stress? Okay, we got a minute left. We got uh, three more to get through. Tip three is set. 
Yes. So you really want to set boundaries. You know, we, so many of us are working from home. Our kids are at home. So you want to create a routine where there are discrete boundaries in terms of times you're working, times you're engaged with your kids, as well as putting your phone away. That can be a big distraction for so many people. Yeah. And it's hard for a lot of folks too, as well. Process is tip number four. Yes. So the next one is you want to process your grief, allow Mm. yourself to you know, to think about your feelings, allow your feelings to be there. You want to ho- embrace those feelings. And I talk a lot about, about the, how to manage your emotions in Mama, You Are Enough, because when we take care of our emotions as parents, we can help our children navigate theirs. And it's going to be an emotional time. Parenting is emotional mm-hmm. just already on top of a pandemic. It's even more emotional. Yeah, so it's so it. important Speaking to about really that grief. allow yourself to feel and come up with strategies to manage your emotions yeah. so you can feel better. I think that's so important because I think some of that grief too is just being a parent and, and, and you just you're, you don't feel like you're doing it the right way and you kind of grieve over what you've done and how you parented as if it was just horrendous, but we're all just trying to make it through. Okay, very quickly, tip number five is the last one. It's called importance. Yeah, so I think it's really important, you know, part of parental burnout is when parents over function and they do everything for everyone. So have a family meeting weekly, you know, talk about what's working well, talk about the kids' strengths, your strengths, and be practical. Start delegating and giving them some responsibilities. Talk about the importance of gratitude and saying thank you and mm-hmm. appreciating one another for those um, acts of love that I think a lot of parents do to keep their homes running. Those are really important and it gives a chance for kids to also talk about their feelings as well as our own, which helps us navigate through the challenging times. That is really good advice. Dr. Nikki Gosian, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And her book, Mama, You Are Enough, is now on sale. And I, I love that title because a lot of times we just don't feel like we are, but indeed we truly are. We just got to get through it.